Hi everyone, it has been a hot minute since I've been behind this camera doing a video on something Halo related that isn't release notes or chatting with Halo themselves. So, I thought today, well I'm going to do a couple of videos I think today to be fair, um, but today in particular um, I'm going to start with scheduled tickets. It's something that some people use, it's something that a lot of people don't know about, and I'm going to throw my hands in the air and say even I, I know what you're thinking. Even I learned something the other day about Halo that I never knew. Because there's too many settings and too many places. And I've done this for two years and I'm still learning. So never get yourself down when you think you're lost in Halo or you don't know where things are because I'm in exactly the same boat. And I do this for a living. So let's chat about scheduled tickets. Now, on the surface, they're, they're obviously fairly straightforward. We're going to schedule a ticket to be created on a day. Okay? Now... There's a few places you can do it, and depending on where you do it, they have slightly different outcomes. So the first place, or the most obvious place, I suppose, where your staff will be doing it, is they will go to the Customers tab, they will select a customer, they will scroll through this tiny scroll bar, and they will find the one that said Schedule Tickets. Now, you can have different views to this. I'm not going to go into it today, but you can reorder where this stuff is. So if you are making a lot of scheduled tickets, you might want to put it at the front so you're not having to scroll through and find it. But when you do that, you can then click new in the top right, and then we can start to make a scheduled ticket. So we're going to make a scheduled ticket and call this Connor Business. I don't know why. Um, we're going to select a start date, we're going to select a time, we're going to say I want this scheduled ticket to run on the 1st of March and I want this to repeat every month and I don't want it to end, I want this to indefinitely create and I don't want it to create ahead of time but I want to create a ticket for every user linked to this schedule and that's quite important. Users, you can add a user. I can search the users. And this is showing me all of the users in the system, which might seem slightly counterintuitive because I've gone to the customer, I don't know, whatever customer I've gone to, and you'd be like, why is it showing me every user? Well, what you'll actually notice is, is it's, it's not pulled me through that user page. I'm actually in ticket scheduling. So although you think you're making it for that customer, bear in mind you're not. You're making a scheduled ticket and it's up to you to tie it to that customer or user. So just to reiterate on that. So we can add a user, we can search your users. And what I try and recommend is we stick with general users unless we you know, need to make it for James at whatever company. And I could say I want to do a scheduled ticket for a NADA main site and I want to do one for Batley Refreshments. And then you can confirm the selection. What you'll also notice in here though is you can also use SQL queries to determine what users this is made for. Now the clever thing about that is, is remove the, the, the users bit if you, if, if you will. If you think about this logically, you could make a scheduled ticket for any company depending on something, right? So let's say that you have, um, I don't know, let's say servers, right? And let's say you did an SQL query to make a scheduled ticket every month for anyone that has a firewall of a certain version or with a certain expiration date. We can leverage now this SQL query, and I'm not going to go into it today because it gets a bit complicated, to make these scheduled tickets um, automatically for us, which really opens the door. It is a little bit complicated. If you really do want me to deep dive into how we can leverage the, the SQL queries, let me know. But essentially, when you click this, you're going to have to write a bunch of SQL. Um, I call this dynamic SQL because that's kind of what it is in the rest of the system. But essentially, we'll say, create it for these users depending on this essentially so it could be all the companies that start with the letter a it could be all the companies where assets are over five years old etc etc and what we'll say is just pick a general user from that site but for now let's keep it as it is we've got renada solutions and we have batley refreshments and i'm saying on the first of march make a ticket for both of these people 
will do what it likes. Then we have values. So this is saying, well, what ticket type do we want to make? Do we want to make a lead, a request, an internal, an alert, whatever you desire? The summary. So what do you want the ticket to say? Who do you want the what do you want the status to be? What team do you want? What agent? Yada 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 yada. If you've used Halo for more than 20 minutes, you'll understand exactly what we're doing. I'm just going to make an incident. I'm going to say dollar area. This is an administration ticket. Uh, check the backups. You would never make a ticket of this ilk. Uh, start with new. Give it to the support team. Give it to unassigned. Priority is priority one, etc., etc., etc. And you can start different workflows here, which I would recommend always starting a workflow. Let's just say the ticket management workflow. Um, and you can also do additional fields. So what's really good about this with the scheduled tickets is, is you can categorize them automatically. So rather than having that admin overhead where you have to go through and categorize a ticket, you can add all this stuff on creation, which is super cool. You can also add to-do lists. So you could say, um, I don't know, let's do plan a meeting. Just bear with me. You can do related assets. Now, I wouldn't in this case because we're making this scheduled ticket apply to multiple companies. You can just do this one for one. So you could say check this server. It can get a little bit heavy to do that. And you can also do um, children. So you could also have um, child templates and you could make a bunch of child tickets based on this. And this is kind of using the, as you see here, um, the ticket templates you're kind of using that parent child relationship and these are all the child templates that I have in this build and then we go ahead and press save and what we'll notice is we have Batley refreshments and Ada solutions main if I go to the customer now Batley refreshments go to the scheduled tickets tab you will see here that on the 1st of March it's going to run this but if I also go to an Aided Solutions Limited, I think I might have used my internal customer. No, that was already open. Let's see. Probably paying attention to what I was doing. Schedule tickets. Where art thou? Here we go. There's already two here, look. You'll then see that we have then um, two schedule tickets, one of them being active now. Now, it can be a little bit like, oh, what schedule tickets do we have? Where are they all? Fear not. If you're an admin, you can go to configuration, you can go to tickets, you can go to schedule tickets, and you can then see all the schedule tickets in the system. Now, obviously, just bear in mind that there could be multiple customers, but Halo do show you which customers these schedule tickets are assigned to. That's function one. That is simply making a schedule ticket. We have to make it manually, and it just makes a ticket. It has no impact on your calendar little spoiler there for the second bit and that basically is that it makes ticket on a date now if you leverage agreements in your halo environment you can also make schedule tickets off the back in agreement so if we just click made a test in and go to the schedule tab and scroll down what you'll see here is that we can start to create um, schedule tickets which can be leveraged in a, a few ways so if we click add in the top right, actually I'm going to ignore the schedule hours. I uh, don't want to do this now. Let's just do 10. Okay, 10 scheduled hours. I don't want to email anyone or you could um, email someone. Let's just do myself. But what this is doing is this is actually going to send a calendar invitation out um, scheduling in this ticket. And it's going to appear in the calendar of the agent that we select in a minute. So we can click create scheduled dates and we can say on um, the 1st of March at 9 a.m. I want to make a, do I have anything for what I need here? Nope, I can make a internal ticket for Connor Fagan subject being site visit and the hours I can say they're there for eight hours I want this to recur 
this number of times, I can also set an end date. And I say I want this to end on the 2nd of March 2025. So I want it to make it on the 1st of March 2025, but no more from that. I want it to end at 8am, no, doesn't really matter. When do we want it to recur? We want it to recur uh, weekly and every Monday uh, every week. I think that is correct. Is that right? I think so. Yes. And we'll then see, sorry, my head is falling on my shoulders there. We'll then see in March that we have this calendar entry appear every single week for the remaining. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Please, everyone, hold the line while I speed through this site visit. Hours 8, ticket type incident, Agent Connor, start date 1st of March. End date 2025, 2nd of March. Want to make sure it creates it on the 1st of March. Does weekly, every Monday, every week. Next, there we go, we're back. And we can see as we go through this that then there's a site visit scheduled in every single week for the rest of the year. Um, and away it goes. And then I can press save. And this is going to do two things, just to be clear. This is still going to make the ticket in the system. It's going to make an incident ticket with the subject and the, the hours. Um, but it's also going to do a calendar entry. Now, we have obviously missed some of the really nice stuff about doing this for multiple customers, doing any dynamic SQL, setting up all of the fields on the ticket. But this is really nice for, for people to see that... Um, we're kind of doing these site visits. This is kind of what I would always recommend it for. Um, and then we can go ahead and press save. And we sit back 30 seconds. I will pause while this spins through and does all of this magic. There we go, and we're back. And once you do all that, it will say that you have 414 hours remaining because we have the scheduled hours. If I edit this and type in 424 hours and press save, it will then null it out to be zero. We can see how many how many hours we have allocated. So what you might want to do is, you know, just add these in for the year. How many hours we've used in that period. Um, and again, a few more columns. I don't really know the difference of them, to be honest with you just to see kind of how many we've used so far and how many total hours we have remaining. If you scroll down again here a little bit, we can send outstanding appointment emails. Just be careful with this because as soon as you press this button, away it goes. Um, and we can also send appointment invites. Again, be careful because if you press that, away it goes. And what we'll notice is, is if I just do this and pause a second, jump cut what you'll get is the basically the the below appointments are scheduled with how many hours are allocated what date is allocated and what the subject is so this is really really useful in my opinion if we are doing site visits um, again it can be a little bit annoying if you you know have breaks in them or you know a certain period you don't want but remember you can always go through this and delete out the ones you don't need um, you've also got an ID. So if I just click on an ID, um, this this is basically the um, event in the calendar. Um, and if I go to um, here and edit it, you'll see there's no ticket ID at present. Now, this is because this will only make the ticket um, the day before or the day of the appointment. It's not going to make hundreds of tickets ahead of time. That would be, uh, in my opinion, a bit of a nightmare. So it will make the ticket um, kind of a day before, and then it will attach the ticket ID to it once it's created it. Again, I would just thought I would showcase both of these functionality pieces to you. I don't do this a lot. We used to do this for site visits because it really did solve a problem for us. Just bear in mind, though, that um, this hour remaining stuff kind of is a law of its own. But remember, 
if you are doing a site visit and you record the time against the ticket, that ticket time, once you close it, will then be caught against the agreement, whether that's fixed or prepay. So two ways to handle scheduled tickets inside of Halo PSA. You can go to the customer or the config area and make a scheduled ticket, or you can go to the agreements, click on the schedule tab and start to have fun and play with these. I've been Connor Fagan. I hope this has been mildly helpful for you. If you haven't used it, have a play. Any questions, put them down below. I do try and respond, but we are extremely busy. Thank you again for all your support. Have a beautiful day, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.